I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, right, in the United States. And I don't, I don't follow sports, but I think the Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns football team has won like three games in the last four years or something. I mean, it's really dreadful. And I ask myself, all these people that I know who for 35 years have been supporting the Cleveland Browns, go, for what? They're terrible. I never felt this patriotism. Like, you're from here, therefore, like, whatever this place does, everything that happens, it's fantastic. I never felt that. And can we talk about uh, the role the political climate played? Yeah. Um, this is, this is a big one for me. Um, you know, as a kid, uh, I grew up, I was, you know, getting kind of the, I got angrier, I guess, in my early and mid twenties. Uh, but as a kid, I was, it was this really kind of precocious libertarian guy and less taxes and, you know, and, uh, uh, I never, I, I, I was never patriotic. I thought, this is dumb. Like, I, I never understood patriotism. I never, like, what is this all about? You know, it's like. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, right, in the United States. And I don't, I don't follow sports, but I think the Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns football team has won like three games in the last four years or something. I mean, it's really dreadful. And I ask myself, all these people that I know who for 35 years have been supporting the Cleveland Browns, go, for what? They're terrible. I never felt this patriotism. Like, you're from here, therefore, like, whatever this place does, everything that happens, it's fantastic. I never felt that. Uh, I changed when 9/11 happened. I changed. And I kind of I got into the the flag waving thing uh, for a while, um, but it wasn't me. You know, it's not really me. Um, obviously, it was a very very sad time uh, in U.S. history. We can we can, we don't have to debate all the different aspects of that. But you know, eventually, I just came back to I don't really like what the country does. I don't like the value. I mean, I'm not saying I hate every person from the country. I'm not saying I hate everything about the country. I've actually seen a lot of things about the country that I that I respect now that I have the clearer focus of being gone. But um, I was in South Africa uh, when, when Trump got elected. And I really didn't know how to feel about it. Honestly, uh, if I had voted, I probably would have made a self-serving vote for Hillary. Not because I think she would be a good president by any means. Um, but because I figured, like, she's the status quo, and she wouldn't have bothered people like me too much. It still would have been, there would have been annoyances, but it wouldn't have been like, you know, I mean, she just would have kept all the globalism stuff in force. And for, for someone like me who was just out of the country, it would just, wouldn't have been any worse. Uh, when Trump got elected, you know, the, the, the libertarian in me who's like, you know, you, know sh you show it to those elitist, you know, snobs. I'm like, oh, great, fantastic. Part of me also realized... Um, I'm probably gonna have to make a change because um, I'm, I'm not America first. I mean, I, I think the United States, I mean, they have a pretty good position in the world. It's not like, the, you know, I mean, this thing they're being laughed at by everybody. I don't really know about that. But I mean, um, there's a few things I guess Trump has a point on, but I, I'm not America first. It's not, it's not my thing. Like I, you know, I'm go where you're treated best. And I, I realized, I mean, I started to really see the country uh, as um, like the psycho girlfriend, like, you know, like she's, she's talking, like she's, you know, she's shouting, she's throwing a, you know, she's throwing a, fly, a frying pan across the kitchen and like who knows when she'll, when she'll lash out next kind of thing. Like, I've just got to, like, you've just got to step back and keep your distance. And um, yeah, I, I, as much as I appreciate the kind of anti-establishment nature of, of Trump, um, this whole thing where, like, you know, this kind of return to isolationism. I, I guess it's good if you're a factory worker. You know what? Listen, nobody blames factory workers for voting in the interest of factory workers. But yet, I'm not supposed to want politicians who represent my best interests. And ultimately, I just realized, I mean, not only are both parties pretty much the same, but with this America First, it was just like, it was just really... I, I knew there'd be problems for people like me. Was there a turning point in your life? Where, 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 I, where I switched, where I realized this was more a direction. Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember turning 33, uh, not right before I renounced. And I think what 
was really influential for me in um, removing some personal friendships and, and uh, um, you know, people from my life uh, in business and in personal life um, who were, I think, not a fit, who were difficult, who, who took advantage. And, and, and bring, I brought in some new people who were really supportive and loving and I think really feeling, um, you know, for the first time in, a, in an adult life of, of just working hard around the clock, you know, here, here's really some love and support. And I soon after met uh, who's the, the now Mrs. H. And uh, I think that, um, you know, having, you know, kind of been traveling around for a while on my own um, without as much love and support and then deciding, no, I, I wanted the love and support. I wanted caring people in my life. I wanted more caring people. I had some, but more. Um, I think that was really influential. That was about three, I turned 33, about three mo uh, two months before, two months before I did this. And I think that was, um, I don't know if it was a turning point, but it was a very influential moment where I think it was much easier knowing that I had people who weren't Americans, and some who were, but people who, you know, I could travel around the world and I could, I could know that they, you know, really cared about me and that I wasn't on my own. I think that's important. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you wanna lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.